I don't think so. What's going on everybody, it's Nova, welcome back and what feels like years in the making will soon be a reality. What you doing, The Thaumaturge is back like JT bringing sexy back and with the wizard changes of Ma 24? The Thaumaturge is looking better than ever, baby. I'm actually surprised with the amount of attention this Paragon got versus its counterpart. But we ain't here to talk about the Arcanist. Nope. In the first round of balancing, the Wizards were given a 10-20% to increase across the board, with much bigger increases to mechanics like Smolder, which now ticks at 150 magnitude, up from 40. <laughs> boy. With the goal to bring as many powers as possible into the usable category, with the intent of bringing the wizard up as a whole compared to the other DPS classes. Now with these changes in effect on preview, the wizard had two rounds of changes, overall increasing the magnitude of at wills, class feats, dailies, and encounter powers. These buffs, considering what the dev said about bringing as many powers as possible into the usable category, on paper, seems to be doing exactly that. But what about in practice? In combat, where it actually matters. One of my biggest issues with the wizard was how there was practically no diversity between the two paragons. You would always be forced to use Ray of Enfeeblement on mastery, which makes having other spell mastery powers irrelevant in single target. Which brings up the concept, Orb of Imposition's added effect of your control powers deal an additional 5% damage to control immune targets. Again, seems really good on paper, but in practice, it's really nothing but air in a bag of chips. If you use Orb of Imposition with Shatter Strike, that's an additional 200 magnitude plus an additional 5% damage for your control powers towards control immune targets. On paper, it sounds wonderful, but are you really going to give up 10% from Ray of Enfeeblement for 5% from Orb and 200 additional magnitude from Shatter if you're using Icy Rays on Mastery? Nope. Now don't forget, Spell Mastery was adjusted and Icy Rays become 700 to 1000 on the final strike. This makes Icy Rays hit like a daily, but then again, it's not as effective as Ray would be on Mastery. So I asked the devs, why? You're still forced to play the same way you played before these changes. So where's the originality? The diversity? What's the difference between playing as an Arcanist versus the Thom? The gameplay and rotation is practically the same. One of the issues that made the Thom less likely to be used in AoE combat was our inability to provide burst damage quickly when you compare to the other classes. This was more or less the focused outcome that received the most positive results from paper and testing. The Thom's ability to be comparable in AoE combat is high and I actually really like the way the AoE is on the Thom at the moment. Scorching Burst is one of those at wills that you want it to work how you want it to work. And it's interesting because it can be used to help you maintain Smolder and the Rhymefire Smolder ticking individually simultaneously. Scorching Burst has been increased to 60 on the tap and 110 when channeled longer. Chilling Cloud now has a magnitude of 90 up from 65. But that's not to say you don't have a choice in at wills. You also have the option of magic missiles with arcane presence for that additional 5% damage of your cold and fire powers. Chilling cloud for bosses with adds or Ray of Frost for more secluded targets. Fanning the Flame has always been one of those abilities that's like, it's really nothing but air in a bag of chips. With its decreased cooldown of 18 seconds, a base magnitude increased to 500, and tick magnitude increased to 100, Fanning the Flame now becomes something you want to consider for those quick AoE fights. When used with glowing flames and smoldering recovery, Fanning the Flame becomes highly considerable. Icy Rays now has a magnitude of 600 to 850 on the final strike when used on the same target. This is honestly really good when you think about it. When used in Spell Mastery, it becomes 700 to 1000 on the final strike when used on the same target. That's not including the benefit from Orb of Imposition's 5% additional damage. Icy Rays is a stun, and you cannot stun a boss. Add that with Shatter Strike's additional 200 magnitude, and you have an encounter power that hits like a motherfucking daily. Conduit of Ice now has a magnitude of 350. Chill Strike now has a magnitude of 660 and 300 on Spell Mastery. Fireball functions the same, but it's been buffed to 350 on Encounter Use and 700 on Spell Mastery. Given my honest opinion, I would swap the effects of Chill Strike and Fireball 
and then just call it a day. And that's probably why I'll never be a dev. Now, Furious Immolation is interesting the same way Scorching Burst is interesting. With its magnitude increased to 900 up from 700, it appears to be one of the only abilities that actually adds Smolder and allows you to maintain that Smolder by using other fire-based abilities. This effect squeezes more and more DPS out of the Thaumaturge, which is why that Smolder buff is significant. There's two builds to this magnitude and I think it makes the Paragon that much more exciting and fun to play. Now Ice Storm, yeah, Ice Storm, no longer has a knockback effect, it was replaced with a knockdown, and increased the magnitude to 1200 up from 600. Swath of Destruction increases Smolder's damage by 10% and targets affected by Smolder take 3% more damage. Let's not forget about Smolder's internal buff and feats like Glowing Flames with Smolder. Combustive Action now generates 5% action points, which is a massive buff because as long as you apply Smolder first, you're going to be generating that AP. There's a new AP gain helmet, the classic Schult boots to help give you more benefits from this class feature. Frostwave now applies 6 stacks of chill and freezes enemies within 30 cubic feet of you. Enemies that are already frozen will have their freeze duration refreshed. So let's talk about the Frostwave Shatter Strike combo. When using Frostwave, you're going to freeze enemies which will proc Shattered Strike, and assuming if the enemies were already frozen prior, their freeze duration will be refreshed and you have a chance to proc Shatter again. A very interesting combo to say the least, because the faster you can freeze enemies, the faster you can benefit from Shatter, and if these enemies are dying quickly enough, you can use Combustive Action, you're generating lots of AP and benefiting from one of your strongest class feats. Shatter. Now, Relative Haste provides 20% max cooldown speed, which is around 1.8 seconds. It's barely even two, if I'm being honest. Smoldering Recovery, when used with Directed Flames, now grants you 0.3% AP every time Smolder deals damage. When not using Directed Flames, you'll gain 0.5% AP each time Smolder deals damage. Either way, still a really good feat to consider and use. Directed Flames will now increase the smolder damage from 80% down to 25%, but you can proc this every second instead of once every 12 seconds, meaning smolder will deal 25% of its normal damage instantly when applied when using directed flames. You'll receive 0.3% AP every second that you do that while under the effect of smoldering recovery. So just think about that. Over the course of 12 seconds instead of once every 12 seconds, the interactions for this are still kind of weird so I'm not sure how long this will actually last. Glowing Flames, another smolder centric feat, now increases the damage of smolder to afflicted enemies to 30% up from 20%. Icy Veins range has been increased. Frigid Winds bonus damage per stack of chill has been increased to 1.5% thus giving you a total of 9% increased damage at 6 stacks of chill. Add this with Chilling Presence and you have yourself another interesting way to build a thom for single target. Target. Which brings us back full circle. The goal was to bring as many powers as possible into the usable category so that they would be worth considering in both AoE and single target combat. In my opinion, I think this was semi-completed. One of the biggest issues that I talked about at the beginning of the video was how the gameplay of each Paragon is practically the same. I think if you wanted to force players, even though you shouldn't force players, but if you want to force players Cryptic into using Ray of Enfeeblement, at least adjust it so it doesn't counteract the changes that were recently made for spell mastery and orb of imposition because at this point it kind of seems like wasted time and potential but check this out real quick instead of the 10 percent from rayon mastery that 10 percent should be the added effect as the encounter power a tooltip revamp similar to that of arcane presence so that if you use ray of enfeeblement on mastery the enemy will take 10 percent additional damage from your cold fire and lightning abilities if you're an arcanist you'd benefit from cold and lightning if you're a Thaumaturge, you'd benefit from Cold and Fire, which wouldn't force the player into using Ray of Enfeeblement on Mastery, but instead open the door for you to use Orb of Imposition, Fireball, Icy Rays, Arcane Presence, Arcane Tempest, Imprisonment. Ray of Enfeeblement would no longer be mandatory for both Paragons, and it would make the Paragons that much more unique and different instead of a carbon copy of one another. This is just one of the things that I thought of, and if I'm being honest, 
It does bother me that after all this time, it still seems like shit ain't changed. <sighs> but honestly, the thumb is in a way better place than it was before, especially in AoE combat. But if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful and want to stay up to date, be sure to titty smack that like button as hard as you can. It really helps with the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel, join the Discord, and until next time, my city needs me and impressive. You will make excellent subscribers. <laughs>